All right, Kraken Penny, we got 8680. Why don't you guys introduce yourselves? You can take it away. You, you're veterans of this. Let us know what you've been working on and your experience in Robot in 30 Hours. Okay, so uh, first I just want to mention we made the cup sleeve here that just goes over it to like uh, identify an auto with all the different colors. We just used our logo. Um, and then here's our robot design. Uh, we call this mechanism the double reverse four bar. First updates now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SOLIDWORKS is free for first teams. Over 80% of US engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. SOLIDWORKS can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first to register your team. First alumni and mentors are making Stryker a top priority for their internships and careers. That's because Stryker knows that those in first are the leaders and innovators of tomorrow. If you want to help make the world a better place by creating life-saving medical devices and technology, get started at careers.stryker.com. When it's powered by the motor, uh, this will remain parallel to the ground so that it's able to like stay uh, you know, it's, it's able to stay parallel for ease of putting the cups on there. And then we have this claw that sort of extends and retracts to pick stuff up. And uh, one thing that I'd like to mention about the field real quick is that when you put a few cups on the small ones and then deflect it like 40 degrees, they can go flying. So it's super easy to de-score those. That's just something I wanted to mention about the field for those who don't have it yet. And so we realized that problem early on, so we made a custom smaller drivetrain to make it easier to fit between the poles, and so we're less likely to hit them and possibly fling off some of the scoring elements. What's the uh, size of your drivetrain? Uh, it's about 12 by 12. We actually designed this uh, drivetrain for last year's season, um, and we, had, we CNC cut some of the panels last year that we had left over. So we just quickly assembled that this morning. And the full robot is actually outside of 18 right now. But we just kind of like threw the, the, the claw part here. That's what, else, that's what is outside the size requirement. But we just kind of threw that together. And by tomorrow, we'll have it in 18. Talk to us, talk to us about uh, any other uh, components, mechanisms, your robot. Uh, anything you've learned so far about uh, the game? Like, have you, other than the cones putting on, have you tested anything else so far? on the field or anything like that? Yeah, so driving over these black things, I don't really remember what they're called. Uh, they're like the lowest scoring parts. Driving over them is kind of hard. Sometimes you can get stuck on them. So that's a big reason why we implemented the drivetrain from last year, because we have this art cut out to go over the barriers and we can just strafe over those pretty easy. So that shouldn't be too big of a problem for us going forward. Uh, I know we got a video coming out for it in a little bit, but uh, there are some big rules uh, that I know this year are super important for teams to pay attention to. Uh, what are maybe a couple of the uh, the big uh, rules that you think uh, teams should be making sure they're reading up in the game manual for? I think some of the some of the biggest rules this year are going to be the penalty is penalties uh, making. Uh, Penalties will lead to points on the opposite team, not point deduction, uh, and uh, circuits. Circuits are going to be a big thing this year because they're a high way of scoring points, and uh, denying your opponent a circuit will also be a large thing. Yeah, by circuits, he means like uh, connecting from both sides the your color's corner through like having the top uh, cone on each of the poles in a straight line or really any connecting line. Oh, I know we got a couple questions coming in from chat. Do you mind reading those off and then we can respond to those? Hannah F7 says, is the last stage of the double reverse four bar a virtual four bar? Question, what led you towards that design? Yes. So what led you towards going that that design uh, that you picked? Um. So what led us to that design is, it's a bit hard to see, but there's a chain on the side of it, and it allows it to be driven completely passively. This entire mechanism is only lifted by two motors. There's one on this side and one on that side. Um, so there's no electrical connections other than the one for the claw. And we went for that for simplicity. 
Uh, as you can see, this has a lot of motion. So we wanted to minimize all the cables we had to run to minimize what could get broken and weak points of the design. Next, a person with a, a very long name says, do you guys use OpenCV to detect the sleeve of the cone? No, we use TensorFlow. So can you talk a little bit more about uh, using TensorFlow plot process, like any advice that teams looking to use that as well? Uh, yeah, so we've used TensorFlow the past few years because uh, the FTC SDK for the Android app comes preloaded with models to use for the TensorFlow. And we found that those models that FTC gives us work really well, um, especially if you design your team elements in a way that will work with them. And we got another question coming in as well. Mystic. ZX4 has a very good question, and it is, how are you going to deal with such a wide robot when you have to take steep turns in the game? Well, compared to uh, the older sort of 18 by 18, like full sizing box sort of uh, robot, this is actually isn't all that wide. Uh, as I mentioned before, it is a bit wide like this way, but we're very soon just gonna like shift all that back so it won't be as wide. Um, yeah, so when it turns like around the poles, there's plenty of clearance and we shouldn't have to worry about descoring anything uh, because we made sure to make the drivetrain pretty small. Additionally, we're gonna put all of our other weight, like our electronics, the controllers, the batteries, down as low as possible to keep us down on the ground and prevent shifting around as we're making turns. Do you guys think looking at uh, from a programming standpoint, is there going to be any way that we're going to be able to have either some sort of autonomous code or any sort of sensors to maybe detect the poles so you don't bump into them or anything like that? Is that a possible route to go with? Like, obviously not in 30 hours, but maybe during the season. Uh, yeah, that seems like it could definitely be possible. You could do that with distance sensors pointing at them. Uh, you could use color sensors to sense them. They're bright colors compared to the dull background of the ground. Uh, so, yeah, it definitely seems possible to detect them in autonomous and avoid them. I'll, I'll grab the next question that came in. A question came asking about your claw that you have. Uh, you guys definitely probably have the largest claw, I think, out of the teams that we've seen here so far. Uh, talk to me a little bit about that thought process uh, when you were approaching the 30 hours challenge of going with the claw so large. Yeah, so the first thing we're going to do after this is make the claw smaller. Uh, because it is very big. We just like threw this together in like the last 30 minutes. Um, I mean, yeah, it's, it's pretty big and it does not need to be that big and we're gonna change that right away. Uh, so that's not as much of a design decision as this is just a very like rough first iteration. So let's look in the, the future hours as well too. I know this is a question that we've asked and also a question that Chad asked as well too. Uh, what's What's left to do on your robot currently right now? Where do you plan on being in the morning? Well, one thing we've noticed when uh, extending this whole thing and testing is that there's a lot of force behind it. So adding weight to the bottom by the drivetrain or just maybe even like making the drivetrain 16 by 16 is stuff we've talked about. But uh, as they are CNC plates, yeah. They <laughs> so that's the first time we've actually tested it with the claw so we definitely have to add weight to it safety first right yeah but yeah so adding stuff to the bottom or making a bigger base that's going to be uh, a big thing for us going forward this video on first updates now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors First alumni and mentors are making Stryker a top priority for their internships and careers. That's because Stryker knows that those in first are the leaders and innovators of tomorrow. If you want to help make the world a better place by creating life-saving medical devices and technology, get started at careers.stryker.com. SolidWorks is free for first teams. Over 80% of U.S. engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SolidWorks to design great products. SolidWorks can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SolidWorks.com slash first to register your team. Special thanks to Team 8680, Cracking Pinion, for hosting Robot in 30 Hours and also to their sponsors.